All right, so this is uh, Jack B. Flippin versus M1 Abrams. We haven't done a Jack cast uh, in this tournament yet, and we have seen Abrams play once before. Uh, I will apologize in advance. There are birds in outside construction next door, and I am recovering from COVID. So um, if there are any random noises that I cut out throughout this game, um, particularly coughs or anything like that, uh, that's probably why I'll try and make the editing nice and smooth. We are playing on Pillars, uh, a good standard map, favoured usually by a lot of players. Good cover. Five capture points from memory, one in the middle, two off to the sides each. All right, so Jack B flipping on team one, Abrams on team two. Uh, looks like Jack B flipping has got two ships there and then four up the top now one of the other games in his previous round i saw him bring six light cruisers and i thought that was a pretty cool change up because i haven't really seen that in this tournament yet um abrams we've seen with the light cruiser heavy cruiser uh builds so um yeah it'll be cool to see what what he does um, we have seen this map being played by abrams before um against uh tempest fox i think it was so it looks like yeah, the six ships here, and then one, two, three, four. We'll have a look in a sec. I missed, missed all uh, M1s. He deployed the, the last couple uh, pretty quickly. All right, let's see what they've deployed. It looks like Jack B. Flippin's deployed the six light cruisers. Um, last time he had them paired in groups of two. So it uh, looks like the 250 millimeter guns, a bunch of defenders, defenders, and then I would ex expect these are either missiles or torpedoes. Yeah. <laughs> Funny message there from Jack. Yeah, it doesn't really look like he has a lot of electronic warfare on these ships. Which is super interesting. Both both teams already going for a capture, so early points for C and D from a, from Jack. And Abrams is moving straight into A and straight into E with an exploratory Thunderheads being released. He'll no doubt see uh, what these light cruisers are once they come around. Otherwise, if we continue having a quick look, it looks like um, some of the defenders have been swapped out for chaff and maybe repost. Looks like uh, blanket jammers on this one. Standard diversionary tactics. Dropping chaff looks like they're all set to manual because they've all uh, popped off uh, a few pieces. So that says to me these are similar builds. He's got um, chaff, some missiles. Well, let's have a look. Yeah, he's got missiles, he's got chaff, VLSs. Chaff and VLSs. So I reckon these four are all the same. Getting those continual thunderheads coming up from the spigot. Small amount of defenders, but easy enough to destroy those missiles. So Abram's getting the intelligence of the sort of point defense that Jack has. Two to two, but uh, sorry, two to one at the moment with uh, Jack capturing at point D. Otherwise, yeah, all these other ships are the same. So let's have a look at Abram's fleet. Uh, Spigot up the top. Spigot up the top. Uh, Pinard VLS 16. So he's up, we know he's got Thunderheads. We know he's got um, some active point defense. Sorry, he's got some point defense in the terms of probably reposts or um, chaff up there. Same deal with Jalapeno, but this one actually completely different. Got some defense from missiles, but looks like a 120s and a defender. So it's going to be able to defend itself and then maybe hunt down any small targets that it anticipated. Not going to work as well for here, but you know, that's not the point. Smoke is moving into point A, always the hardest one to capture on this map, and is a similar vein for Jalapeno. I wonder if Jack's brought the 250mm RPF here. 
particularly for these smaller points, smaller ships. So two each, and Abrams is now capturing the center point. So, so we're, you're going to need to. Jack's going to need to push into the center. He's got a good survivability with his light cruisers. And then here we go, the bulk of Abrams' fleet. He's got the 450mm um, heavy cruiser, Auroras. It's got some missiles. If you saw the match against Tempest Fox, this is pretty much the exact same ship by the looks of it, unless there's been any internal changes. He's got Sting. He's got Sting providing pinard support. So Sting and I think uh, Spigot being the same ones. Abaddon providing some of that medium medium guns, uh, point defense and locking. And then he's also got Shade and Ghast, so same build for Shade, and then Ghast providing the electronic warfare. So last time we saw something very similar, a very similar setup from Abrams for when he fought Fox. So this was where it will get interesting. Um, if we see here, point B is probably the most undefended. The heavier ships will take a long time to get there. So the light cruisers would be able to come through around point B, maybe take out Jalapeno, maybe take out Spigot if they get close enough, but it's backing off. I think the problem for that Jackal face is that punching through the um, these two light cruisers here are going to have to fight not only two light cruisers, but a heavy cruiser. All the while, these smaller ships are just going to be able to run around and capture all these points behind um, behind Jack's back as he moves away to capture other points. So he's in that position where he needs to hold three to win, but he needs to find three to hold that he can then just sit on. And straight off, we can see the Hurricanes being fired out from the Shade and Abaddon. Point defense coming out. Chaff being deployed, but obviously not effective against Hurricanes. And against this amount, I don't think the defenders will actually do a good job. Particularly the angles. <coughs> so the Hurricanes have missed, but they do have the ability to come back. I don't, now, I, don't I mentioned saying that there wasn't any... Um, so yeah, they have the ability to come back. And as you see, they've looped around. Uh, they've missed for the second time. Okay. Question is, why are they missing? But now it's opening up the angles of attack. Her defenders are actually getting it. Uh, it looks like two impacts. One around the torpedo and sort of one in the back. Uh, it was pretty good, actually. I didn't expect... I didn't expect Jack ships to survive that. I expected one of them to, to sort of be crippled. Which I think it may actually have been. Yep, looks like it's knocked out its drive. You can see that there's no light there. If we look at Slush Fund, it's got the um, it's got the light. So Slush Fund's gonna try and divert the attention, I think, from Capital Gains. <laughs> So it does look like the 250 was taken out and yeah, definitely got in there, destroying a thruster and an engine. But out of the line of sight of all the other ships, so that's pretty handy. Now in this trade, you've got ships with missiles, uh, two light cruisers that are gonna be able to, you know, focus down this light cruiser as we now see what I was talking about before, the small corvettes capturing point D. But he's going to aim for the Iwa corvette instead because he's more likely to kill that. But with only one, two defenders now, the Hurricanes are going to have a better chance of, of hitting, and they are. Like you can see where we're getting, I think that's about four strikes already, plus 250s, and he's going to start to lose... He's going to start to lose some of the major components. So he's losing defenders off the sides from a few of those hits. And he's losing a couple 250s. And that's going to make it hard to get out of that firing zone. 
Now, if we have a look uh, over on the left-hand side, these three ships have taken out the jalapeno. So that's going to make Jack's life a little bit easier. Still got the spigot firing, you know, those exploratory thunderheads. But they're going to be a lot slower, so Smoke can probably just now move up to point C. And it looks like these two light cruisers over here, both Shade and Abaddon, with their Iwa counterparts, are just going to be able to sit here and attack capital gains. And then eventually... Oh no, capital gains is back in the fight. No, its drives are still out, but it looks like it's firing missiles. Mace torpedoes being fired. No idea where they're being fired to. It looks like the communications for that have been uh, lost, so they've just gone off into the ether. Perhaps they were going to try and get uh, in and around here. But then the communications were destroyed, and therefore they that, the mace just lost its ability. So, you know, as these, as these ships passed, you know, uh, fired... As these ships here drove past the slush fund... It would have made sense to fire the maces, nice and close. But then the loss of communications mean loss of guidance. Uh, hurricanes, yep, so capital gains is gone. Hurricanes being used pretty pretty effectively here. And this formation is now going to turn around and probably come back and uh, take out Slush Fun. We haven't seen Steampunk do too much. It's rolling to bear. It probably knows that these are coming. I'm going to start to engage. And he's actually going to go forward. Fraudulent return here, diving down in the arcs of fire of the 450s. Spread going wide there. The enemy is securing zone boxer. Thunderhead being launched. I would wonder where they're going. I wonder if they're being fired over at Steampunk. I think the steampunk's going to be able to easily defend this. Yep, reposts, auroras. Unless there's a, a huge amount of missiles. Yeah, it looks like he's missile dumping here. So that's just one aurora and one flock. Smoke now looks like it's making a run for point C. Point B ca being captured over on the other side of the map. Oh, and here we go. All these ships look like they have just dumped all of their missiles. Being waypointed around. Being waypointed around. And this could overwhelm... If we can get... If Jack can get these to hit, he might be able to really cripple this heavy cruiser, but the chaff just being continually deployed out to the side. At some point, the chaff will stop. Oh, no. All those missiles are just not hitting. Yep. Point D being captured by the light cruiser. So all of those missiles missed. Really good defense by the steampunk. Fraudulent return getting out of the line of fire whilst capturing a point. Point C soon to be captured by smoke, I imagine. Yeah, so here it goes. Turning in. Uh, current state of play. Capital gains tax and jalapeno being traded one for one. So definitely in Abram's favour. Slush fund uh, just sitting here dormant and just being peppered by 250mm HE shots from Abrams. Points are definitely in Abram's favour. 3 to 2. It looks like Fraudulent Return is actually unable to capture this point. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. It's capturing the point. Yep. Just looked like it was going very slowly. So whilst uh, a good portion of Abram's fleet is uh, now moving by the looks of it. Moving around to point D. Going to leave the slush fund where it is. 
all the missiles being expended by uh, this cluster of light cruisers was super unfortunate um, from Jack. He had a really good chance to, to hit the steampunk and just the ability for that to be um, to to um, just the ability to dodge that really saved it and really weakened Jack's ability to continue to fire those missiles. A couple hurricanes to just put this one um, sort of in that hurt locker a little bit more and some 450 HE by looks of it coming out from the steampunk who is angling its guns that way. This ship is probably not going to get back online any anytime soon but you know in lieu of any other targets you may as well at least keep hitting on it uh, remove its damage control teams etc. So now we have Abrams moving around point D and there's a lone light cruiser here that is heavily damaged so if there's any more hurricanes uh, even 250s will be enough to probably take that out. Let's check its guns. It's got all its cannons working but its point defense is, is a little bit sore. You've got Sting and Spigot who are still up and on top and bottom of the map. Atlas now being captured by the light cruisers. And Sting's under the map, so he's not going to be able to see that. The question is, what, where do they start to go now? So in a trade-off, you know, all these light cruisers prob could probably destroy this heavy cruiser, but, you know, it's going to take a while. And there's still two other light cruisers on the game. Yep, so, okay, so on the field. So slush fun destroyed, you know, it's always, it's either red window means it's dead. Looks angry when you, looks angry when you point them like that. Uh, sometimes it's worth, you know, making sure that an enemy's dead so they, they don't come back. With pink, uh, point B destroyed, a fraudulent return is going to uh, move away. Uh, and that's probably wise to, to preserve and it's going to give uh, Abrams the ability now to just capture point D. You can see smoke burning for point C but at this point in time Jack has the ability now to catch up on a couple points at 4 to 1. And it looks like Spigot's coming down from its post and it's going to dive towards point B. So with the light cruisers now out of the way he's probably got good vision that there's you know there were six light cruisers he saw four there he saw two there and now he knows that there is two dead here um, and we probably can see Abrams can see this one and these three in the center this is a, a safe move to now do so now what we might see actually is a light cruiser fight in the middle here as as Jack takes his three ships and pits them against these two and destroys that Iwa, um, Iwa frigate. The question is, what does Steampunk do? It's sort of a bit out of position at the moment. Although it is denying a huge portion of the ground. So if anyone wants to capture point E, they're going to have to run past Steampunk. Now could be the time to start to maybe turn it back towards point A. But C and D are being captured. Abrams does have the lead. He does have the numbers. Nothing hasty has to be done here. And here we go. Three 250 mils are being fired all at once. Now it looks like, well, no, they're all okay. Now this is a lot of firepower here from the 250s. This frigate is probably a nice, easy target. Big broadside, slow moving. If they can get some fires onto this one, that'll take out a huge portion of jamming from Abrams' fleet. Just as we uh, jump back to the larger view, smoke has captured C, spigot on B. The the main fleet here has captured point D, and they don't need to take this engagement, so they're going to pull back. And you know that's a wise that's a wise option. You don't need to always take every single fight. 
they did what they had to do. They captured the point. This is the control game mode, not annihilation. Um, yeah, play smart. Steampunk now able to see a fair amount of uh, light cruisers. It's trying to get the fraudulent, fraudulent, fraudulent return. Fraudulent return was the one that was fairly damaged over at point, D, on point D. It's defenders are working. I think the defenders here are actually just um, at their at their maximum range. And it looks like it'll get away, but it's getting 450 mils fired out at a fairly close range. Uh, even bow tanking a couple ricochets there. Looks like two ricochets. Front fr front thrusters starting to degrade. Steampunk taking some hits on its broadside, but it's questionable of how much damage that's actually doing internally. Definitely a, a shot went through there. One thing that's interesting to know about the game is that um, the damage you actually see on the hull is realistic, is is pretty close as to where the damage is correlated internally. So it's not just visuals, it actually has a game mechanic. So, you know, you can say that if you've taken a damage here, that the components sort of around that area behind would have actually taken it. Now, I believe that means it's penetrated. I think some of these small scorch marks mean it hasn't. Uh, I think that means that it ha has as well. Some thunderheads being fine, so a little bit, a little bit of tid tidbits of uh, knowledge in a future tutorial. A couple thunderheads, there's three light cruisers here. It's going to get some hits, so we're going to get some thunderheads through, even with the chaff. Um, just two hits by the looks of it, but you know, it could be enough to do with the 450s or so firing down. The ship will be able to stand and take a fair amount of damage, and this is going to give time for Abrams now to flank around behind the light cruisers, capturing them in a, a bit of a pincer movement and take that final capture final capture point fraudulent return looks like it's now hovering down towards point e so we might may, may trade um point e there we are lost my bearings for a second we may take uh do a trade of point e for for jack and point a for abrams One of the things here is that at this range, the 450 is probably doing pretty well. Their spread is going to be quite tight, um, and it does have its lock still working. It's going to be able to s sit here and fire as long as it has that accuracy. You can see that there, both both shots hit, both shots hit. Thunderhead being fired here. Thunderhead missing. Missile. Missing. Ooh. Words are hard today. So how far until reinforcements come out? Not f not long. Looks like they're uh, using their sort of um, thrusters to get around. And here we go. More Thunderheads being fired. Looks like uh, two of the Jax cruisers are going to be uh, moving back around to D as point E is captured. Whilst this formation here is going to finish off the failure to fire. Failure to fire. So still four to one on top of his initial lead. Abrams uh, in a bit of a commanding position in this map. These light cruisers are slowly taking enough damage to whittle them down. Plausible deniability taking some hits around its thruster. Failure to fire looks like it's just sitting here struggling. Whilst Shade, Abaddon and Ghast are able to start putting some fires down onto it. 
Fraudulent return uh, sitting on E. And it looks like Jack's just sitting uh, spigot. And just holding that position there. I don't know where smoke's going. Maybe just moving it into cover. Sitting on point A would be silly. Nope, oh, that's mum call. I'll give her a call back in a sec. It's always good to catch up with your parents. Alright, steampunk. Uh, whoop, just turn the notification. Yeah. So steampunk f hitting the failure to fire. Failure to fire will lose this engagement as the 250s just destroy this this ship here. Um, it is trying to get away, but eventually these front thrusters will be degraded. It doesn't look like there's a lock maybe on these ships as they keep missing with these um, 250s, which as I say that they stop, start hitting through the engines. The thunderheads from Sting look like they are deploying now, saving them into. Uh, saving them for last. Going to try and use them to take out point E, I would imagine. Yeah, there we go. Where are we going? Where are these going? Are they waypointing? Oh no, he just fired them all into Slush Fun. Slush Fun was dead. Remember, Space Oil. Space Oil is an indicator that this ship is gone. Um, and checking out all its mounts and its power. That was a lot of missiles. A bit of a misplay there, but, you know. Fog of War. It's easy to criticize as a caster. You know, playing is a bit harder sometimes. Um, unfortunate. That, that could have been saved to maybe cap of the fraudulent return which um really wouldn't have been able to do too much most of its point defense was sort of taken out one uh destroyed oh that's iwa no oh, that's important uh, the iwa would have been out so wouldn't have been able to uh, deploy any countermeasures it didn't have it its vls 23 was taken out so it couldn't have done chaff um and depending on the way that the missiles came in he could have actually got it from you know a rear angle where the point defense didn't do as much Fraudulent returns now being captured by uh, M1 Abrams, who is moving into Pointy, e, and they're going to just use their 250s to uh, shoot that down. We're at 9.22, uh, three points uh, to two. Uh, Jack's just clicked over 500, so he's captured Point D back, but there's not much that he can really do at this point. The heavy cruiser is just going to sit down and shoot through failure to fire. It's not going anywhere. Steampunk's too slow to go anywhere else. Uh, point E being captured back by uh, M1 Abrams. It looks like Jack's still got three ships to um, use. The plausible deniability um, relatively unscathed. Just a little bit of um, damage at the front. Fraudulent return taking massive damage is probably not as operable. And then NyQuil Margarita, uh, which is probably what everyone needs after they are doing a tax return. Not 100% what sure sure what NyQuil is though maybe it's like a Panadol in Australia here and yeah that's where we can see it here um M1 Abrams has escaped the uh the tax man and you know that was a pretty good one we've seen both of these fleets now um well I've seen this fleet for the first time on sort of this channel this cast I saw Jack play hit on his channel I thought it was really cool and really interesting um Abrams we've seen him play before there goes the drop saw next door Building the apartments, you know, that was a convincing win. That was a convincing win, and that's, uh, you know, a little bit hard there to uh, counter as well, because... You know, that that's a bit hard there, with the smaller ships... With these smaller ships being able to run around the map and just capture points behind you, you know, that's what we were saying at the beginning. Um... And one of those things you need to consider in your games is like, how how am I capturing the ships? How am I capturing the points? Um, you got to remember to play the game mode. And, you know, with these six here, if they grouped up, you know, it, it opens up, you know, you could go so many different ways. If you'd if you grouped up, then, you know, he could have been like a death ball, but that could have been then hard to counter. Because um, then everyone else could have just moved where, wherever, wherever they wanted on the map. Um you know the heavy cruiser certainly throws the gameplay a little bit 
um, in a different area because uh, it is harder to do, uh, harder to destroy. You know, the smaller ship certainly fell to the 250s. Um, but, you know, it, it's, hard, it's hard to say, you know. So here we can see capital gains uh, eliminated. <coughs> capital gains eliminated early. All those missiles doing huge amounts of damage. Uh, failure to fire to had no offensive capability at the end. Um, same to fraudulent return. NyQuil and uh, plausible deniability were the real only two who were able to maintain um, sort of movement throughout the game. And then Slush Fund, you know, he got hit by all those hurricanes early on. When we look at Abrams, um, Abaddon took barely any damage. Gars took barely any damage. Uh, da, 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 where's his other one that he had? Shade took the brunt of the uh, the damage here, but even not then, not too much. Only four thousand and repaired a whole bunch. A couple damage thrusters, a couple internal components, but that's okay. Uh, Gast was fine the whole time. Like, that would have been a priority target for me, removing that Ewa. Uh, smoke was fine, spigot was fine, you know, even steampunk after all that 250 millimeter damage, it, it didn't really die, it was fine, it received 8,000, but you know, it doesn't take in damage reduction, you know, the damage received amount doesn't, is just how much damage hits the hull, not how much actually hits internally by the time we have damage reduction, etc. Anyway, good game. Hopefully uh, my voice doesn't sound too bad. I'm uh, looking to get the next tutorial out soon, so that'll be fun. Otherwise, have a good day and take care.